Thank you everyone for joining us uh, today. We're gonna be doing a uh, discussion on the manifesto for SCARM success. Uh, but before we get started, I would like to invite you to join the conversation. Uh, during the uh, webinar, we're gonna take questions from the GoToWebinar chat. We will also be keeping an eye on the SCOMathon Slack workspace. If you click the link, it should take you directly to the workspace and you can add um, comments there after the webinar. If you have any further follow-up questions or um, or just wanna start to keep the conversation going, go ahead and post there and we'll keep an eye on that and um, post as we have, as we're able. So, Today's panel is myself, Sean Williams. I'm a tech technical evangelist for Squared Up. I'll be joined by Richard Benwell, uh, founder and CEO of Squared Up. And we're here to discuss a manifesto for SCOM success. Now this was a presentation that Richard gave during the SCOMathon keynote uh, that happened uh, earlier this summer. And what we wanted to do was kind of follow back up with Richard and get some of his feedback on what it is, why he put it together and just some interesting points. We'll talk through what it is just in a leisurely pace. Um, if you have questions as we discuss, please um, pop in from there. So Richard, thank you for joining me. Hi, Sean. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, we've been kind talk of- Talk through at a leisurely pace, but, but uh, hopefully keep it to 30 minutes, right? We, uh, we, have, a, we have a tendency for going on longer. <laughs> yes, well, we did a walkthrough of this uh, last week and we were what, an hour and 20 minutes, so. <laughs> get their hook a little bit more quickly this time. But uh, so uh, let's do a quick introduction of the manifesto. What is it? Why did you come up with it? And why is it important? Oh. All good questions. Yeah, the, um, the the keynote I gave in, in the SCOMathon had a subtitle. So manifesto for SCOM success is a very grand title. I, I guess I'll talk a little bit about um, you know, why it's called a manifesto. But the subtitle was the five common behaviors that lead to successful enterprise IT monitoring with SCOM. Uh, and really in a nutshell, it was um, bringing together, I guess, uh, you know, over the, over the 10 years I've been working with, with SCOM since, um, you know, since uh, SCOM 2012 and a, a little bit earlier, you know, I've seen the, the good, the bad and the ugly, you know, when it comes to SCOM environments, um, obviously many, many of those customers engaging with, with Squared Up, um, either because they have a really quite a bad environment, um, uh, an ugly environment, and hence why they come to Squared Up, or, or maybe in a good environment and they're, they're looking to do even more with it. But I have seen the, the whole spectrum. And what you start to see is certain Kind of patterns, certain sort of behaviours that are common for those um, uh, those companies and those organisations that are being really successful with SCOM, right? You really hear a lot, lot of different opinions about about SCOM and how good it is and how how well it's working for organisations. You start to tune into you know those SCOM administrators and the organisations that, that seem to you know say yeah, SCOM's great, it's doing everything for us. Thank you very much, you know, and and, and you sort of start to learn well, what is it about what they're doing that isn't isn't what other people are doing who, who seem to have less success with SCOM. So this is trying to wrap wrap it all up into into the five uh, best practices, you know, five sort of guidelines for how to be successful with SCOM. I know for myself when I'm at the um, conferences, there's like the two SCOM administrators, the ones that love it, the ones that hate it. Um, but to that effect, we'll just jump right into the next slide, which is here were the five rules that you mentioned. Um, the first one was turn everything off, tune up and not down. Now, at least for myself, I found that to be, it, it's funny because when I was at Purdue, I just put everything in, turned everything on. And then I spent many years fighting against all of the other people in the organization, just too much red, hate this alert view, hate SCOM. Um, so, Tell me about this. Why do you think this is the right way to go? Because SCOM does have management packs. There's all this yeah, stuff that's not. Yeah, yeah, the management packs are the, you know, the uh, both the, uh, the the absolute sort of key part of SCOM and, and, and what makes it, you know, potentially so successful, but also the, the key part of why why it is often seen as, as so noisy, right? You, you install these management packs, as you say, you sort of install them and by default they, they alert on everything um, and you think, great, this is good. I'm, I'm just going to get all these management packs and all this monitoring added in. And before you know it, you've just got this wall of, you know, wall of noise. And, you know, the, the most common thing you hear with um, organizations that aren't being successful with SCOM is, is other people see it as just too noisy, right? It's just a, just a spam engine. It's just, you know, it's kind of sending me alert emails kind of constantly and I just tune out and, and, and you lose all the value of that monitoring uh, right there. 
Um, and the you know the management packs are are the key to to SCOM in terms of you know that that out of the box monitoring. Um, but really, this is all about a. Uh, it's not, you know, not not necessarily literally like you turn everything off and, and see if anyone notices, right? This is a a, a different attitude of, of idea of tuning up and and not down. Um, really, I you know the management pack should be seen as um, uh, the ability for SCOM to alert on everything, right? Uh, and you can turn that on really easily, but you don't want to necessarily turn everything on. So so if you see those management packs as a great way of being able to alert on anything you might want to alert on. But really, you need to uh, only be alerting on um, incidents that 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 uh, someone in the organisation can actually respond to. Someone can actually do something about, and that's absolutely key. Um, you know, so often you just hear about your alerts where, first of all, it's very noisy, but also they just they, they don't go anywhere. You don't know what to do about them because no one actually ever asked to receive that alert, so they they don't know how to to respond to it. So I mean, I'm going to bring that back around. So who's your target audience when you talk about this? Are you are you targeting like the SCOM admin, or are you targeting the CIO? Yeah, I mean, this is. Uh, I think all of these five points are very much you know targeted towards um, uh, the, uh, the the SCOM administrator uh, delivering monitoring to the rest of their organization successfully. You know, with SCOM uh, and, and allowing the rest of their organization to see SCOM as a tool that's actually allowing them to achieve their goals, which is to you know keep 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 uh, you know keep infrastructure up, keep applications running, and deliver those IT services to to end users. Um, so it really, as a I think as a SCOM administrator, the advice here is to um, uh, uh, when, you, when you next have the opportunity, whether it's like upgrading to the next version of SCOM or you know some sort of migration, actually just look at um, getting all those management packs installed, but then just starting with 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 you know no alerting you know so you're not sending out any alerts and actually go to those individual teams and ask them what they want to be alerted on and then turn that alerting on and then they're engaging and that, pretty much all of these points here are all about engagement with the monitoring and making sure it's useful to the 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 the, the audience to the monitoring. So um, I based on what you're saying, the, the message I always take away from this every time I hear it is. You're, you're not only are you tuning the alerts, you're you're tuning the staff, you're turning tuning your management, you're tuning the people to get used to scum by turning it off and then giving them what they want, and then as they get comfortable with it, build build yeah. the relationship. Exactly. Yeah. Build the trust. Yeah. So, build build on that success. Build on that trust. As soon as as soon as um, you know you have too many alerts, you lose that trust. People disengage. And then you never get it tuned because they they just see it as too noisy, right? So they disengage from it, they don't bother tuning it, and it's then too noisy. Whereas if you start on a positive note, which is here's the alerts you know you're looking for, you you know you can build on top of those. I can add more alerts, and you actually keep that engagement, and you make it a much more of a you know a positive, uh, virtuous circle rather than a, than a than a spiral of disengagement. So yes, yeah, start start with that engagement, um, give them what they uh, they they need initially, and, and tune up. I Many other the other I think sort of key point um, that I see with SCOM versus other monitoring tools um, really um, uh, really aligns with this point as well, which is when you do see people turn to other monitoring tools, it's not very often because there really aren't that many other tools that really work at the scale um, that, that SCOM does. Um, but when they do turn to other tools, it's normally just because they wanted something simpler, right? They just, their, their server admins just wanted the five key key metrics, right? Is it up, EP memory disk, um, you know, network? Um, and they just find that, you know, SCON's kind of too much. And it seems a travesty, right? That, that they're going to another tool, not because it's better, because actually it does less. Well, and I think this is one of the cases where just like the community involvement, once an admin gets involved in the community and they hear what else is available, then they can start to say, because Microsoft puts the, the management packs out there and then that's it, their guidance stops. But you know, they have the community and, and people step up to do new and interesting different things. And um, we're gonna kind of jump to the next point in a second, but I wanna just say for this point, we, we targeted another Scomathon session, No More Headaches, Easy Tune Your uh, Management Packs. You know, this is a case where the, the community stood up and we have our sister company, Cookdown, who has Easy Tune. You know, this is a great way of, Tuning those management packs, letting the discoveries run. Um. Yeah, I mean tuning. Um, you know, tuning is is super important in SCOM. It is it is where you get the other noise. Tuning has actually always really been a real pain in SCOM, right? Just manually tuning every single workflow. You know, you, if you do engage users, it's normally on some massive sort of spreadsheet where they they get absolutely lost on you know all of the different workflows in SCOM. 
Um, and, and certainly, you know, easy tune is ties in with this. It gives you the tool, I think, in order to be able to do this confidently. Um, so you can quite easily just scale down all your tuning. Um, you can then more easily engage your users with what tuning they want and then set that as just simple shorthand levels, right? Do you want, you know, mm -hmm. essential tuning? Do you want sort of balanced tuning? Do you want the full, full shebang? You can actually start talking about tuning levels really with shorthand um, and then also apply them uh, with sort of shorthand as well rather than having to go through every single override. Um, so certainly easy tune helps you be more sort of confident about changing your tuning and, and tuning to different levels um, based on, on your audience. And that actually segues nicely into our second point, which is invest in custom monitoring. Um, again, I kind of, the takeaway for me, just by reading that and, and knowing what the first point was, if we've only turned on what they needed initially, you know there's always going to be somebody in your organization that's going to come back and say, but it doesn't do X. Um, is yeah. that where you're yeah, this, from on this one? This is, this, you know, this, well, I was, I was going to say this point is huge, but you know, all, all of these points are, <laughs> are pretty important, but this point is huge. And this really does often separate uh, or set apart you know, those organizations that are, are just really getting so much value out of SCOM and those that just still see it as, um, you know, a useful monitoring tool, but but a little bit sort of um, specialist around sort of Windows Server monitoring. You go into some environments and the things they've done with SCOM just kind of blow your mind. And, and you can you can tell that, um, you know, their, their users are really engaged with that and they've really, they've really got what they want out of SCOM. And again, it goes back to not just giving what you're, or getting what you're given, right? You actually, you sort of want to ask what people want and give them what they what they actually need. Um, and you're going back to that first point, if you engage your users and instead of saying, hey, here's 500 alerts, tell me which ones you don't want. Uh, what? You know, and actually just go to them and say, well, I've got a monitoring tool. It can pretty much do anything you want. What do you want it to monitor for you, right? And most of those things hopefully will be in a management pack, but actually what you'll find is they probably ask for things that are really important to them that aren't in that management pack. You know, it might be a custom, you know, a custom bit of infrastructure, a custom uh, application, a custom component, or it's just something that they identify as the thing that they know they need to monitor and they need to be woken up, you know, in the middle of the middle of the night about um, that's not available in that management pack. Yeah, you're good. I, I was I was going to just lead off of that. I, one of the questions I had for you, which you kind of answered, which was, do you feel today's system admins have the necessary skills? Um, is that do you see that as something a problem for this custom monitoring? Yeah, I think you know there's there's, there's a couple of answers to that. One is um, absolutely they they have the skills or that they you know they can they can certainly build those skills. And actually, the modern sysadmin needs those skills, right? They need to be um, much more comfortable with um automation you know and, and tools that they can achieve automation through and customization of you know of the tools they have um you know we're, we're sort of way beyond the days where you just you know install a product click through and and let it run you really you really do need to both customize it and then start um start automation around it to, to make your life uh you know a lot more enjoyable and, and and the tool work for people so um it is an area where where i think the modern sysadmin absolutely has has the skills and, and should develop the skills I have to be honest, I think it's the area that is the hardest bit with SCOM. You know, it's, it's the bit which has the most possibility, the most sort of opportunity, but it's really hard to get going with authoring uh, in, in SCOM, um, which, um, which is a shame. I think it, it could be a lot easier. There are some, some routes and there's some different, different approaches to it. Um, and, but, but certainly it is an area where, you know, you should spend some time. You should probably sort of find the right approach to, to authoring that works for you, you know, at the level you, you, uh, you are with, uh, with SCOM and sort of general, general sort of scripting and authoring. So then uh, I guess to that point, and on the slide here, we do call out some of your earlier SCOM upon sessions. We're going to try to continue this trend to kind of see how it fits, but are there any tools or tooling or management packs that would help admins that we could, I guess, re refer to? Um, I know I have yeah, my... I think that yeah, I, I think the so part part of the uh, the challenge with SCOM is there are many different ways to approach this. There's many different places you can start at, um, and the sort of different levels, which can be confusing, right? If, you know, you start you start you know googling, you start sort of trying to pick up some skills. Like, where do you start? I um, mean, you, you absolutely have to start with Brian Wren's <laughs> videos that I think are still around that explain everything to do with SCOM. So you absolutely have to start with those videos from Brian Wren. But then, like, you know, what tool do you use? And I think probably the 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 the, uh, the sort of flip side to that, the positive side, is that there are I guess there's some some different levels you can you, you can enter into depending on sort of how familiar you are with SCOM or or with um you know with sort of automation encoding. I think probably the easiest one is the PowerShell management pack. 
I was the one I was most successful with. Yeah, yeah from Cookdown. I think that's sort of the quick win uh, approach. You know, you, you know, I'm sure everyone on this webinar is, is familiar with PowerShell and, and knows how to, to write a few PowerShell scripts. Um, SCOM uh, is still stuck with VB script, right, built into the, the console. You know, the, the PowerShell MP is just very simple. It just adds in PowerShell support wherever there is VB script support. So uh, if you want uh, to add a monitor or collect some a metric or um, uh, add in a, a task or, or something into, into SCOM, you can do that just with PowerShell. So I think that's the sort of easiest approach um, uh, to sort of just add in a quick, you know, a quick monitor. Um, but really, the, you, you get so much more the, the further you go with authoring. Um, I think probably the next step up is uh, Silex MP Author. Um, so that allows you to really start to uh, author the whole sort of spectrum of, um, of SCOM extensions, so discoveries and classes and so on, with a, with a bit more of an approachable way. But before we dive too deep or I, I guess get too far off topic, I want to actually bring it back around. We talk about custom monitoring. We talk about turning everything off. But the, your third point is keeping applications in the picture. And uh, to me, that this is like the, 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 the tipping point where you can get really deep with the custom monitor if you want to. You can spend the time with the management packs if you want to build them. But I found, at least in my experience, that if you focused on the application, you didn't have to go that deep. You could actually spend a little bit of time just focusing on the app part, which is a, a weird way of thinking about it when you're infrastructure. And so to, to your point, why were admins successful with, when they focused on the app? I know why I was successful, but why do you think that they're, they're successful? Yeah, no, what, what you mentioned there is really, really interesting. That, you know, the management packs go often go so deep, so, so deep, which sometimes you need that, right? You know, if you have a, a huge team dedicated to, you know, one particular technology, you know, whether it's sort of active directory or you know, another key piece, absolutely, you know, monitor the, one of the hell, hell out of it. But actually, as you say, that's it's often a huge depth. Um, what a business wants, of course, is not necessarily uh, servers that are up, it wants applications and services that are up, right? Um, and um, yeah, so it's a really, really relating the monitoring that SCOM can offer to your business. And and often your business is not interested in the health of the infrastructure. It, it's, it's interested in the health of those applications and services. And this, you know, this does absolutely differ between different organizations. I think really big organizations, they see SCOM as a brilliant infrastructure monitoring tool, and that's the only thing they need from it. Right, just just monitor the the core infrastructure. I think in smaller businesses, and I think probably Purdue, where you work, Sean, is is a good example of that. SCOM, you know, really was um, uh, well. The, the teams are smaller, and so SCOM had more of a part to play. And really, you were exposed, for example, to really what your your organisation needed was, which was to keep those those IT services up and running for your students and, and staff. Right, um, it wasn't a big enough organisation that all your job was was just running those servers. So. Um, what you often see um, uh, smaller organizations do and really use SCOM successfully is when actually they use SCOM not just to monitor the, the infrastructure, but the, the applications. And you put all of that infrastructure monitoring in the context of an application. So when there's a, a server issue, you can relate that to the application that so that server is hosting and how that relates to um, you know, the, the priority for your, for your business and vice versa. If you've got a uh, an application problem where actually your users are affected and your your business is impacted, you can very quickly find you know the infrastructure that you need to go and focus on. So um, just I want to take some of those key words that you used there because we didn't use those words, like your uh, customer's perspective. That's where like custom monitoring would really come into play. Can you monitor from the customer's perspective to make sure that you're alerting so that you know that the app is down from their perspective? It could look good from each of your silos, but you have a problem there. Some of the management packs, when you turn everything off, you want to turn them back on, but sometimes you don't turn everything on, so you miss something. That's where the custom monitoring helps balance all of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You also mentioned, um, uh, it, I think, I don't know if it was this conversation or one of the ones we had previously, but this becomes everyone's problem. And I think that's where your next point with the manage alerts with ITSM comes into play. Yeah, this is. Um, I think this is a really good example of where um, the world has moved on from when SCOM was designed <laughs> and architected and implemented. Right? Um, you know, there, there, there's been obviously sort of many, many new features since SCOM 2012, but really SCOM today looks like it it did broadly in SCOM uh, SCOM 2012. Um, so, for example, out of the box, you get what uh, email alerts, you get SMS, and you get the uh, command line. Right? 
Um, and you know, back in what well, 2000 and up to 2012, that you know, that's that's you know, that did the job. That's what people sort of expected. Um, these days, actually, the sort of IT organization has moved on. It's matured. You don't do email based you know, kind of workflows anymore, right? Um, you don't just have an inbox full of emails and expect it to, you know, be able to kind of work through those and, and not not drop any. Um, and, and really primarily that's around, as I say, say in that point there, ITSM. So IT service management's been sort of a huge um, transformation, I think, in, in IT organizations. You know, I think even in the time, you know, I've just been working, um, you know, with Squared Up, I've sort of seen infrastructure teams start to sort of um, uh, uh, evolve into service management teams and sort of service desks start to get closer to, you know, to, uh, to, to, um, to infrastructure teams as well. Um, and you have tools like ServiceNow that uh, I'm not sure when that was was launched, but kind of almost kind of came out of nowhere, did a classic sort of Salesforce disruption where um, uh, everyone's now deploying ServiceNow on their service desk uh, and wanting to um, uh, pull all of their alerts into into that tool. Um, so really, SCOM now, um, you shouldn't sort of see it just as a, 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 an email uh, notification system. You, you really need to get those alerts pushed into your, your ITSM tool, your ticking, ticketing tool, where then your organization is sort of structured around that and kind of manage, manage those centrally. Um, I think probably actually a really good uh, uh, resource for this is, is Martin Ernst's blog, so he's an Microsoft MVP uh, for, for SCOM and Azure Monitor. Uh, and he, um, uh, he just talks about how, um, when he was running SCOM, he actually used to feel the pressure personally about the alerts, right? He used to feel like a, a, a personal responsibility for fixing the things that SCOM was alerting on because he felt like no one else was looking at them. Um, and his sort of, you know, his uh, epiphany was, hey, if I just turn off email alerts, no one complains. And if I just send the alerts that do need action, action taken to my ITSM tool, someone will We'll pick that up and not me <laughs> and i can go home at night knowing that those those alerts are managed by someone else um i remember when that post came out and i read that and i thought I, if i turned off email today my admins would just scream but over time it was like you, you know he was right because i i felt that i wasn't successful with scom until i realized i didn't have to fix all those things it was the, it was when i did start to turn things off start to give it out I mean, each of those points, again, I just feel like I keep repeating them, but they each help each other. It's like the, you take that whole context, put it all together, and you realize as a SCOM admin that once you get the other remote teams working the alerts, tuned properly, you have that outside in perspective, and you're starting to use the ITSM to your benefit, then you as the SCOM admin can do other things, things that are interesting to you, and then you do become successful. You can spend the time on more custom monitors or, or as in the last point, dashboarding. Um, yeah, so, um, and of course, your last point, dashboarding. Obviously, we're a dashboarding company, but why would this, why is this part of the manifesto? I mean, is there something unique about it? That <laughs> different? Yeah. And, you know, it's a, it's a slight, not, not, not sort of cheeky, but, you know, dashboard, dashboard, dashboard. It, I mean, it, it's sort of, you don't, you don't really need to say more than that. I think the, the you know, Squared Up's been enormously successful um, and and our customers have been sort of enormously successful with, you know, with, with SCOM, with Squared Up on top. And it comes back to this, uh, this, this, this question of engagement, right? Engaging your users, um, uh, make, making them sort of see the value in, uh, in the monitoring, giving them the information they need. Um, and I think, you know, when I started Squared Up, I would see customers just use SCOM purely through the emails. They would just literally have one email filter with, you know, with all the SCOM alerts in it. And that was their, that was their interface into SCOM. It was their, it was their inbox full of, full of email alerts. Um, and just, they weren't engaged and they didn't see it as, as having any data that, you know, could, could help them, uh, actually with, with the problems they had and the, the, you know, the issues they had in front of them. Um, so dashboarding is all about, all about user engagement, whether that's, um, management and giving them that high level view or individual teams and kind of giving them the, you know, the data they need. Um, it is really the way you can actually drive engagement, you know, even, you know, going off and talking about tuning or custom monitoring, you know, put a dashboard in front of them and say, what do you want to see on this dashboard? And you, you'll probably actually get a better response uh, in terms of how they think about you know what they want to see and how it relates to the other information on that dashboard um, than if you just just ask them that question without that context. I, I think I think an important thing you mentioned there was how it relates. 
when we talk about the third point, which was the applications, that was when I started being successful. Built the applications end to end, showed what was all part of that, and then I visually presented it to upper management. And then they were able to look at that and say, yes, here are all the pieces and parts. And then when you add the custom monitoring into that and you had the outside in view, it, it just worked at that point. And that was when I was freed up to do other things. So that was interesting. Yeah. Cool. So um, that's it, I guess. <laughs> I just, uh, a way of sort of wrapping up, Sean, and sort of, you know, maybe obviously there's hopefully more to talk about this and hope you can have some some discussion on uh, on Slack there. I think I saw, saw a comment about, you know, that first, uh, the first item, um, you know, if you, if you if you do start with everything turned on, that's it. You kind of lose the lose the story. Um, but I think so there's a question around you. Know, why now in 2020 are we talking about you know manifesto for SCOM success when SCOM's been around for for so long? And I think that's sort of um, uh, maybe it's a good good way to finish, which is just talking about I think the 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 importance of SCOM still continuing to you know to be an absolutely essential part mm -hmm. of your your complete monitoring strategy. Um, obviously, there are lots of pressures for uh, for sort of monitoring new technologies you know cloud technologies and, and increasingly sort of application level level monitoring but SCOM has such an important um, role to play uh, long term um, but I think what you find is you know we, we now see new organizations coming to SCOM or the the new SCOM admin who's taken over from you know the <laughs> the, yeah. the, the other admin who's now sort of moved on to maybe to, to, to another role and actually there's 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 maybe kind of less accessible information uh, about how to be successful with SCOM out there. You know, sort of fewer fewer maybe sort of blogs and, and kind of bloggers about it. Um, so it seemed like a really good time just to say, hang on, look, you know, there there is now some really good advice. It is it is quite established in terms of you know following this advice. You know, will will lead you to success with SCOM. Um, so hopefully it's um, both a kind of uh, a good a good sort of reminder for many pros like you sean who who, who knew all this and probably learned, learned the hard way but also then a, a sort of a short you know shortcut for for maybe some uh, some organizations and, and and admins who are newer to scom you know and and, and hopefully can learn from <laughs> from uh, from our mistakes in the past sort of uh, you know, trying to get SCOM successful you, you raise a valid point scom is mature it is still growing there's a community around it microsoft is still investing in it um which is good and you're right, I spent five, six years floundering, trying to figure out where to go, how to make it work. And um, I won't lie, a lot of it had to do with Squared Up and how I was presenting the information. And so that helped me get some of those big wins. And those were kind of like the moments, oh, if I do this, I win that. And over time, your manifesto did align, uh, kind of amusingly, with what I was doing, with and I had no force. I didn't have a, any forethought. I didn't have a plan. But looking back, this is what I would have done. This is what I should have done. And if we keep going where I think the industry is going, where Microsoft is going, my going to be around to stay. And if you are picking up an old landscape, start with this, clean it up, go forward. You're going to be successful for a long time. Uh, if you're starting a new one, which I think you should, um, because there are, like you mentioned earlier, there are other point solutions out there that do things, but nothing that's that framework that will cover your applications, that will connect to your ITSM, that gives you that CMDB in the background. Um, SCOM has a lot of capabilities that we just don't talk about very often because they're they're big, they're big features. Um, no, I think I think that was a, a very appropriate way to uh, wrap this up today. So thank you. And thank you oh, for your time. We kept it to a half hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's so much more to talk about each one of these five topics. Hopefully, we can do other other coffee breaks another day um, and really kind of drill into into some of these in depth. And it'd be great to hear also from from those in the community who have lived through this and have had the scars, um, but also then maybe can kind of get a give another perspective on on how to be successful with each one of these steps. You know, we didn't talk about it uh, prior, but you bring up a valid point. The Slack channel, it would be interesting for people to post their stories. It, you know, even if they don't want comment on it, just post it, because I'm always interested to hear other people's perspectives. Um, I know, at least for myself, I had my own perspective, I had my own challenges, but when I hear others, it, it's kind of like that, um, I think it was uh, Information World that had like the Shark Tank, where they would just have crazy stories from the field. And they would, people would post them, you would kind of dissect it, like how, what would be the quick win? What would be, how would this apply? So if yeah. people uh, have the opportunity, post that to the Slack channel, it'd be pretty good.
Cool. Um, I want to extend a thank you to Pascal for posting Brian Wren's course um, to the um, channel there. Did we, I think we, I think everyone can see that. Um, and then see here, okay, so no other questions. So I guess we're gonna wrap it up. So thank you. Uh, Great, thanks thank everyone for attending. And cool. Oh, oh, do I gotta do the proper wrap up. <laughs> yes. Uh, coffee break resources. Um, here are the coffee break resources. These are the links. Um, I know that Wayne in the Slack forum asked for us to post it, and I did not see that until just now. So we'll get that. We will also publish recordings at Scomathon Coffee Break, and there's a YouTube playlist. Uh, before we end, I'd also like to extend a thank you to Squared Up for sponsoring this webinar. I know, um, Rich, you're the CEO, but um, Squared Up, along with Cookdown, who also host uh, the free Scom Essentials Management Packs, uh, which I definitely, if you have not done it, you should definitely go do that. Download the PowerShell Authoring um, Management Pack and the Self-Help uh, Management Pack. Those are awesome tools. It should be a part of every Scom admin's toolbox. Thank you. Thanks everyone for attending and uh, we'll go ahead and end the webinar here. So thanks again. Thanks, Sean.